In this video, we will look at distance problems that involve either the stream or the wind. The trick with the stream and the wind is when you're going downstream or downwind, you get your rate you're going plus either the wind or the current, which will push you, making you go faster. However, when you go upstream, you get the rate minus the wind or the current, because it's pulling against you. Let's take a look at setting up some distance problems that have a wind or current in them, and then in part two, we'll come back and solve those equations. In this problem, we know rate times time equals distance, and Zoe rose for 80 miles downstream. We don't know the time she travels, but we know that when she goes downstream, the water is pushing her, making her go faster at a rate of 3 miles per hour. When she turns around, her rate is now decreased by 3 miles per hour. The also, we also know the trip took 12 hours longer. This means we need to increase our time by 12 to cover the same distance of 80. Looking at this, we can see our simultaneous product that we will want to solve, r plus 3 times the time equals 80, and r minus 3 times the time plus 12 equals 80 as well. We want to know how fast does Zoe row in still water, so we divide by the rate factor, r plus 3 in the first equation to get time equals 80 over r plus 3, and the rate factor in the second equation, r minus 3, gives us time plus 12 equals 80 over r minus 3. We can now replace the time with the 80 over r plus 3 to get our final equation to solve, 80, 80 over r plus 3 plus 12 equals 80 over r minus 3. In part 2 of this video, we'll come back to this rational equation and solve it to find how fast Zoe is riding in still water. Let's try another example. In this problem, we have a plane flying against a headwind for 5,084 5, miles. This is our distance. She's flying against a headwind of 10 miles per hour. When she flies against the wind, her rate is decreased by 10 for a certain amount of time. The return trip with the wind now increases the rate by the wind speed of 10. It's going to take 20 hours less time, so the time is subtract 20 will be the time it takes to complete this leg. It's the same distance of 5,084 on the trip back. We can now see the simultaneous product, r minus 10 times t equals 5,084, and r plus 10 times t equals 5,000, oops, times t minus 20 from the second row equals 5,084. Again, we'll solve by dividing by the factor we want, and that's the question, how fast does he fly? when there's no wind. This would be the rate, and so we'll divide by r minus 10 to find out that t is equal to 5,084 over r minus 10, and divide the other equation by the r plus 10 factor to get t minus 20 equals 5,084 over r plus 10. We are now ready to substitute, replacing the time in the second equation, with 5,084 over r minus 10 minus 20 equals 5,084 over r plus 10. This would give us a rational equation that we could now solve to find the rate which Darius flies when there's no wind. It is important to remember that when you're against the wind or a current, we subtract the wind or water speed, and when we're with it, we add that speed to our rate.